So this is another example that defines for uh, scenario based question in uh, context free grammar and push down automata. So here the given uh, scenario is considered two color cubes, red and yellow. They are equal in number. The logic is red cubes to be taken and stacked all red cubes first. So this is ex exactly given what has to be done to. Later, once no more red cubes are available for each yellow cube, remove one red cube from the stack, make sure a uh, stack should be cleared. Okay, so you have red and yellow cubes. First, we'll be pushing all the red cubes into stack and when yellow cubes come, we are going to remove one uh, red, cu red cube for it. For, a, for each yellow, remove one red. Make sure stack has to be cleared. Okay, so this is equal number of red and yellow cubes. So you can give this uh, scenario languages. You'll have red, n number of red cubes followed by n number of yellow cubes and red are equal to one. So this is the scenario. Okay, so first we'll have all red, red cubes stacked first. Okay, so first we'll have all red followed by yellow cubes and it is of equal number. So this is the language description for the given scenario. Now, uh, we have to construct a context-free grammar for the scenario. Context-free grammar has to be constructed in uh, such a way that like you'll have variables and also I'll have a starting variable. I'll have equal number of uh, red and yellow cubes. So I can write the transition as one red and one yellow and this is recursively called again and again. So for each red, there is an equal number of yellow cubes coming over here. So red and yellow are your, uh, what is a uh, terminal symbols. Okay, and uh, finally, how does that end? Your n is greater than or equal to one. So n value is equal to one. This is the minimal input. So when n is equal to one, we have one red and one yellow cube. So this is your minimal description. So when you want to draw a transition diagram, when n is equal to one, you choose this R S. Sorry, R Y. Okay, so this is your input. When n is equal to two, you have to draw the transition. Like first, select the uh, this function this production r s y and instead of a substitute r y so you'll have 2 r 2 y right when n is equal to 3 this goes recursively here so this is how you have to verify your production is correct or not okay so again you choose r s y production and finally when you choose r y 3 r's followed by 3 y's Okay, so this is your n is equal to 3 condition. So this is how you construct any uh, context-free grammar structure for it. Now construction of context-free grammar is done. This is the context-free grammar structure for the given scenario. Okay. And next what we have to do, we have to write the transition function for it. So context-free grammar generated the language, generated the context-free grammar, the CFG. And uh, design a PDA for the given scenario. PDA transitions, they ask for the transition functions. So transition functions is like you have to write what happened each step. Transition of, you can have one step for pushing, like you not state when the input is R. Sorry, first step is to push uh, epsilon into, uh, sorry, Z0 into stack when stack consists of nothing push is a not into stack and uh, when you have r so r comes first right you'll have r number of uh, n number of red cubes for each number of red cubes you're going to put it in the stack okay so when you are first transition your stack will consist of z naught and you'll have r in your uh, input okay so when you have r in your input and z naught is there in the topmost element of stack we stay in z naught uh, q naught itself put r z naught into stack and for the next r and all like you remember this transition there first we have to push the z naught and second is for all your uh, n number of r's you are going to put it on the top and scan the input okay so when q naught consists of r in your input and r in your stack you are going to push R, R into the element that is popped out of stack and removed from the input has to be pushed into stack. Okay, so this is till you are R. And what happened when you have Y? For each Y, you have to cancel one R. So that is the given scenario, right? You'll have equal number of R's and uh, Y's. So in transition, when you have Q 
know y in your input and r in your stack you are going to cancel it so we'll go to new state q1 by canceling this r for the given y okay so for all your y in your input you are going to cancel the transition of q1 for all your y in your input r in the stack you stay in the q1 state itself by canceling both you don't push anything into stack and finally at the end of your transition if all your inputs are cancelled okay make uh, make sure the stack should be cleared at the end so you have to accept it either go to q2 state by moving epsilon and epsilon pop out the z not out of stack and go to accepting state now you make q2 as a final state too okay so this is your transition function when the transition is given you have to write the transition not the diagram okay if you want to you can draw the diagram too but there is another question which is requesting for the transition diagram okay so list all pda and cfg tuple for the given scenario so this is cfg and what all the tuples that is used for cfg representation here you have uh, cfg equal to set of variable terminal uh, starting symbol and set of production rule here you have only one variable that is s and the terminals are red and yellow these are all the in, uh, things that comes in your input okay so s is your starting symbol and this is your production rule okay so this is your production rule these are all the tuples for a context free grammar and when you want to do the tuple for push down automata for push down automata you have q set of states sigma set of input symbol transition function q not the starting state z not the bottom element of stack and set of all final states okay so for this example when you want to write q you have q0 q1 and q2 as the states and your input symbol are r and l why see we miss something tau and your transition function is given all those place this is your transition function tau is the element that can be pushed into stack the element that can be pushed into stack will be z0 or r nothing more and q0 is the starting state z0 is the bottom element and q2 is the final element last accepting state got it perfect so this is the tuple notation for push down automata this is the tuple notation for context free grammar now illustrate pda diagram for the above scenario so when you want to draw the diagram i am going to do i'll have the starting state q0 you just redo this transition function in case of your diagram so epsilon comma epsilon push z0 into stack first step when you have r in your input is it not in the stack push r is it not into stack when you have r r push r r into stack and in your input if you have y comma r for each y in the input pop out this r go to one state for this transition so in this place for each y pop out one r so finally this is the last transition at the end of your input if uh, your stack consists of z not alone pop it out and go to accepting state like this okay so this is transition diagram very simple push down automata is exactly very simple when you understand how it is actually working okay and last one is check whether the input whether three consecutive yellow followed by three consecutive red ball can be taken three consecutive yellow followed by three consecutive red ball so first comes yellow followed by three so three consecutive yellow followed by three consecutive red so you will have three yellows 1 2 3 4 sorry three yellows followed by three red so this is the input that is given so for this input you have to draw a instantaneous description starting from q not state when the input is 3 y followed by 3 r with epsilon first step is done you have to put z not into stack without consuming any of the input symbol so when it comes to next step your input consists of y and your stack consists of z not you don't have any transition like this okay so this branch cannot be proceeded at this place okay so but when you have the reverse case like three uh, red followed by three yellow when your input is 
R R R Y Y Y. Then you can proceed on starting from Q naught state with R R R Y Y Y. With epsilon, you can proceed on writing the transition. So look at the scenario. That's very important. Based on the scenario, what all the question that is asked, you have to write the answer. Okay. So if this is the question that is asked, then you can proceed on writing your instantaneous description. So initial step is to push this. Z not into stack for all your red. We stay in Q not itself. Remove one R. Put that into stack again. Uh, for the step Q not itself. Remove this R. Put it into stack. Okay, so for all exact transitions, you have the same. We stay in Q not itself. Remove the R. Put it into stack. So three R's will be pushed into stack. And in uh, Q not when the input is Y, stack consists of R. Y comma R, you are going to pop it out. So we go to the transition as Q one. For this Y, this R will be cancelled. So you'll have two Ys, two Rs. So for all the remaining uh, Y and R combination, we stay in this Q not Q one state itself. So for this Y, this R will be cancelled. Finally. Q1 for this why this R is cancelled. So all your sorry, I have forget to write this Z naught at the bottom. So all the inputs are cancelled. Stack consists of Z naught alone. So now we go to Q2 state by removing Z naught out of stack. Since it is mentioned to remove that, make the uh, stack as empty. We are doing it. Okay. So at the final step, you have to write the statement at end of input. Stack is empty. So input accepted. Okay, so the statement is very important. Or you can write it as at end of input transition is in final state. Hence input accepted. So either this or the statement you have to write it and you have to complete the transition. Okay, so based on the given scenario, try to correlate like when it is in. Uh, push tone automator, you always have this comparative kind of questions. So compare this number of elements to this number of elements. So you have to find, you have to try to find a scenario like this. And you should know what is an uh, tubal notation, what is a transition function, and how to write uh, instantaneous description for any of the given input. When you are focusing on a scenario based question, first forming the language is very important. And once the language is formed, you should know these basic criteria. What is a tuple notation? What are all these seven tuples that are used to represent a push down automata? And how to write the transition function? How to draw the transition diagram? And also how to write an instantaneous description like this. So all those things you have to understand it. Okay. Thank you.